What's going on guys, Adrenaline here with you. It's Thursday, June 15th. How's everybody doing out there today? So essentially I can go ahead and give you this demo and I can go ahead and give you some thoughts about it. But as we said, between this date around next week this time, Final Fantasy 16 will release. It's got a six month exclusivity period on PS5 before it goes to PC. Now, I just want to throw this out there as someone that it's never gamed on a PC, but because of my cousin, I get everything also on board as far as a really nice rig. For those that want to go ahead and wait, again, I've played on consoles my whole life since 87, but for those that want to go ahead and wait and say they want to play this on their PC, I would imagine you're going to have a pretty powerful one. So if you had a $500 PS5, you go ahead and play this, you get a locked 30 and everything else is good. I hear a lot of people complaining about the 60 FPS performance mode or whatever you want to call it on that side because it's not performance. It doesn't lock in. It bounces all over the place. Even for TVs that have VRR, like I have the LG C1, I got that on a heavy discount before everything got discontinued. So I only paid about 700 bucks with all of that on that side of it. You know, these TVs can be a lot more. But even on that end, I mean, my goodness... This game is absolutely spectacular, but even with all their stuff on the performance mode, it bounces all over the place. So if you want to wait, essentially, let's say you got a really high-powered PC, but for those that are in the mid-grade side, if you want to wait six months, and then you want to wait another year for the patches, just so you can get an extra 30 FPS boost, I, guess, I mean, I guess, on that side, but I really don't understand the freaking point. I'll just be honest with you on that end. For those that are graphics whores, I guess that's what you are. I'm not one of those. I just want to go ahead and throw that out there. So in this main point, I'll use about the 15 minutes that are given on that end and tell you what this game is about and what I think and as far as some of my backstory going forward. So I think this could be a useful review for those that aren't necessarily a bunch of Final Fantasy fans. You just want to check the demo out and see what it's about and get some real thoughts on the side of it. So I'll just give you the long and short. As far as the PlayStation, that was my first first console. Again, I was born in 87, so about 97 is release of Final Fantasy VII. I'm 10 years old. That's my first RPG. So I go between that trilogy, 7, 8, 9. Then I go between 12 and Zodiac Age when I played the remake on PS4, and then 15 on PS4, and then 16 now on PS5. That's it. 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, and 16. All the other Final Fantasies kind of delved in here and there on that side, but... Nothing really blew me away, nothing really stick with it. I'm not the biggest Final Fantasy fan. On the other side, do I love RPGs? You bet I do. On that side, I love Dragon Quest and Persona as some of the big ones. I played a bunch of other Squaresoft titles back in the day. Final Fantasy Tactics is one of the best games ever made on that side. But as far as mainline Final Fantasies, I can take it or leave it on some of these. Again, I'm more Dragon Quest on that end. So hopefully this kind of speaks into propensity of what I'm about to talk about. Because for Final Fantasy 16 in this demo, I think this is one of the best things I've ever played. And this is just the demo side. I understand it's going to be part of the full game and all that stuff carries over. So if you do have a PS5 and you want to indulge in the demo and you want to get your fangs into it now, everything else carries over from the story. And then when you do beat the demo, you can play a little bit of a uh, Acon challenge on the side of it where you can get some of your other summons and get more battle content. I know there's some other cutscenes. I didn't play that part of it after the demo because I don't want to skip too far ahead and miss other parts of the story. So I just played the demo sequence of the first portions of chapter one. And then once it closed, I was done with that. And then I go ahead and make this video. So that's what's in front of you on that end. So as far as, again, the graphics from what we see right now, this absolutely freaking blew me away. I understand some people can say, well, it's only 30 FPS, uh. I, I, I get it. Some of you guys are like that. That's how you are now. I understand that. If you want to talk about uh, raining on everything, then, then that's what you want to do. This game is absolutely freaking beautiful. I, I don't know what else to say on that side. Everything kind of blew me away. Everything was completely fluid. It's a grand scale. I can't imagine how many years for Yoshi P and company and everything for Square Enix it took them to make this game, but I can tell it's been an absolute love affair. On the fact for next week, they said that they're not going to need a day one patch. I don't know how all that's going to work considering in a grand scale game like this, but if that's the case and you feel that freaking confident, the last time we've ever had uh, no day one patch, I think was Dragon Quest, what was it, 11 on that side of it, or 12, Echoes of an Elusive Age? That was no patch, and that game worked perfectly. So if we're getting to that point, I'm already going to feel pretty freaking good on that end, if you know what I mean. 
So as far as the music and all that, it's an absolute banger, 10 out of 10. Everything is absolutely theatrically beautiful, and I get a lot of the Final Fantasy vibes, the tactics vibes, and everything else. Sound design is absolutely wonderful, too, from the incredible explosions, from the big-time summon fights that, yes, you get to control. So there's a lot of that work in there in your favor, whether it's like Rama, Ifrit, or Shiva. Again, forgive me if I butcher some of those pronunciations, but that's kind of how they roll on that side between lightning, fire, and ice and all that. You'll see Shiva, you'll see Titan here. You get to control some of that stuff throughout the game, but again, the grand scale of the amount of enemies that you see on the screen and all these cutscenes, I mean, just look at all that stuff that you're seeing right now. That's all seamless. So, here's the main thing for me. When I talk about Final Fantasy and you think about turn-based, again, that's what a lot of RPGs can bring to you. You say turn-based or nothing for a lot of you. And I get it. Final Fantasy VII Remake kind of mixed a little bit of that. You think about Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger, some of these other old-school RPGs. Vagrant Story, or I think about the bust-out and closet in there and burn that, burn that out there in the original uh, PlayStation disc and get the copy and play on my PC and try that out again. It's been a while since I've been waiting for something to play since I got all the Stanley Cup Final stuff done. But yeah, I mean, you're dealing with all the old school stuff. When you're thinking about Final Fantasy 16, I immediately had the vibes of the original Devil May Cry on PS2. And then lo and behold, again, I've stayed away from the Xbox Showcase, PlayStation Showcase, Summer Game Fest, only some of the things that I've read about 16, so I'm playing it for the first time, making this video for you. But I kind of got the initial vibes of Devil May Cry, and then I go on and look and see, yeah, guys from Devil May Cry made this. So that's pretty freaking cool on that side. So if you love, you know, the Dante part with the Ebony and Ivory with the guns, you can kind of use that for part of your fire spell. You can use some sword combos for Clive Rossfield, that's who you play as. And uh, it's pretty seamless on that, so you get like a forward swing sword combo with the square, your triangles, your fire stuff, you can evade with R1, everything is done in real time. Nothing seems incredibly difficult on that side, so I imagine if you want a little bit more of a challenge once you beat the game, get a little bit of a hard mode. That's probably how it's been over the remake over the last couple of times when that's been done. I'll probably do the same on that end. Again, I got cerebral palsy and all that, but it, it's it's not too difficult to play all these other things. It's a lot of fun as long as you got control in the hand. The dual sense is incredibly comfortable and everything, and even at 30 FPS for all the snobs out there, everything is completely paramount to the touch and it's fluid and seamless and I'm enjoying it. So the easy dodge moves around, you kinda you can parry at the right time, everything's action oriented. Boss fights. Here's something you want to talk about even within maybe let's say three or four hours demo time. When you get into some of these boss fights, when you're not even just controlling summons, I'm talking about when you're on the ground and all of that. You might have a couple AI partners that are with you. I know some people talk about the AI is going to be really intelligent and help you. Yeah, they do some things, but still you kind of look at it from some of the times on the side when you're controlling Clive because you only control one character. You can't switch in between like the remake for Tifa and Barrett or Cloud and all that Earth. And this you only control Clive. But on that side, you look at some of your AI boneheaded team and it's like, yeah, he could have dodged that, but you end up taking a big time blow and get knocked out of the battle for a little bit here and there. It, that kind of happens. Some of this stuff seems brain dead a little bit on the AI, but we give that a free pass as far as everything else that we've been seeing. And I totally understand that. As far as the gameplay and all that too, when you're outside of the battle, just like it was for Chadley and the FF7 remake, you can reset your skills anytime with like 100 gil. This is free. So anytime outside, if you don't like a certain skill, you can completely reset the tree. You can get you know jump attacks. You can add more combos. You can get more power to your spells. You can combine holding triangle or square to power up your sword attacks or your fire on that side. You can mix and match a little bit of everything and tailor to your play style. You can use it after beating the demo for the challenge part of the Akon to uh, kind of sync we ate everything you want for your battle and uh, figure out what works for you and what doesn't, which is cool. I skipped all that, as I said, going straight into the demo to talk to you because I didn't want to check out the other future part of the cutscenes. I just wanted to go straight through the chapter one sequences before it ended. So here's the main thing that I haven't mentioned, and I kind of buried the lead here. For those, I, I, some of you won't care about this at all, but I think this is one of the heaviest ones for me. So, 16 mainline entries for Final Fantasy. Again, that doesn't include the spin-offs, the Chocobo Racing, Chocobo Games, uh, Dungeon Crawlers, Final Fantasy Tactics, all those things are spin-offs. And what I mean by that, if it's not a mainline numbered entry, it's not a mainline Final Fantasy game. This is the 16th mainline part of it. 
This is the first game, even outside of spinoffs, the very first game that's rated M in the Final Fantasy universe. So again, 18 plus on that side. So what's that going to give you? It might give you some drug use. It might give you some curse words. You see some F-bombs, some sexual themes, some blood, some violence, all the good stuff that you would imagine. But in a Final Fantasy game. So in this sense of a sequence of story from everything else we talked about, it kept me on my absolute toes. And even on the side for the demo, I'm not going to say waterworks, but it definitely kept me on my toes and kept me on guard, and I was invested in the story. And within this demo, I won't go ahead and say cutscenes that last like Hideo Kojima, as far as the Metal Gear Solid side when he was still making those games. I'm not talking about the Snake Eater remake, but everything for Hideo Kojima. On the side of it, you know you're going to need your popcorn ready, and you got about an hour and 20 minute cutscenes. It's no exaggeration. For Final Fantasy, these one things are a little bit longer, maybe in the uh, 7 to 10 minute range. But if you want to go ahead and say play this demo, you might want to set yourself aside 3 4 hours time, because it'll go around in a finger snap, and I can't snap my fingers on that side. But you will be invested with this completely, and you won't want to put the controller down, because it is that good. With everything that story invested, I do get the sense of uh, being in Evilise and Final Fantasy Tactics. I know that's a area that's not subjected here, but it kind of feels like that Evilise Alliance, right? Like when, in the sense of, let me just say this is plain as day. It's going to be about war. It's going to be about intrigue and family and betrayal and backstabbing. And people are going to get hurt. You might shed some tears yourself, and you're going to be completely invested in the story. That's essentially what I get right now. It's going to be grandiose in style. There might be a couple uh, QTEs here and there. I'm not really a fan of those, but it wasn't over overdone like Resident Evil 6 on that side where it made you want to freaking puke. So everything else is pretty well done. Between the graphics, which is absolutely phenomenal, between the story design, the immature rating, you can tell they're going to be on the verge of something epic. The gameplay is very Devil May Cry-esque. The music and sound design is an absolute 10 out of 10. I mean, look at the, some of the stuff that you're seeing right now. Again, this is a, a Titan Summon versus Shiva on that end. I'm sure imagine as the game goes along, you'll be able to control all of those as they've talked about. But yeah, you see all this stuff in real time, and it just looks absolutely freaking gorgeous. So I can't imagine, again, how long it took to make all this stuff. But it just goes without saying here, if you got a PS5, and you have access to the demo, I could have just buried the lead on this side too. Don't even listen to me, just go download it in the store and play it right now. Just set yourself about four hours aside of time. Because this is an absolute 10 out of 10 demo. And I already knew, you're going up to GameStop because I want my physical copy. Yes, I'm one of the old school disc type players that I want to get a physical copy. And again, that also works for emulation and things down the road. So you can go ahead and grandiose future and you have the game because you own it. And it's a novel concept, right? It's not just digitally. When stuff goes down, you don't have it. But I got the game day one. I'm going to pick it up next week. And this demo, again, this isn't even just a holdover. This is going to get you locked into everything in the experience and what you thought. Well, again, from someone that isn't a grandiose Final Fantasy fan, as I said, between 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, and 16, that's pretty much the extent of my playing. I loved all those, didn't really care so much for all the other ones. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is an absolute 10 out of 10 on that end. And I can't imagine this game is going to get anything less other than Game of the Year nominations. I don't know if it's going to win it. But on that side, even for someone that's outside Final Fantasy realm, and loves video games and everything else in general, this is something that I'm absolutely not going to miss. And I encourage all of you to play it. If you want to wait another year, my guess, after all the patches and the six-month exclusivity period to play on PC, that's your prerogative. I don't think a 30 FPS boost is going to change my granular thinking, but if this goes to Xbox Series, as I imagine, in S and X, and you're remotely a Final Fantasy fan after that exclusivity period, please don't miss this one, because I think this is going to be an absolutely epic game. And everything that I'm giving you from the demo, I've tried to hit all the avenues. This is something that you cannot miss, and next week this comes out. So go get your money on this and get this done quickly, because I think this is going to be a game that's impossible to put down.